Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Pickup, filmed on location on the north shore of Oahu for the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing, which should start tomorrow at Haleiwa. I'm Tiff Casalis with Ashton Goggins and the star of Heavy Water, North Shore resident Nathan Fletcher. Last episode, John Paisel let it slip that John John Florence was back on the water for the first time since his surgery in July. And though he wouldn't be going for a triple crown surfing in Haleiwa or Sunset, he had every intention of surfing in the Pipe Masters. Yesterday, Stab caught up with the world champ at Log Cabins for a high stakes multiple choice questionnaire. Starting with this one? Yeah. I'm going to surf in the Pipe Masters because A, I love the wave so much. I want to take the shine off someone else's world title. I want to secure a spot in the Olympics, or D, all of the above. Probably all of the above. The world title, though, I, I honestly don't really care that much. It's a bummer, though, to interfere with that at this point. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. That would be fun. That would be pretty fun to interfere with it a little bit. Like, in the past, when I've won my world titles, and then it's been because of both times, because Jeremy beat Gabriel, <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, you always want to see first and second battle it out in the end, you know. But then again, if you're going to win the world title, you got to be everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the Olympics in 2020, win gold, then go on to win the world title. Do I retire? Probably not. It would be really cool and I'd pr maybe take a break for a year. I don't know. I would have to see in the moment. I'm kind of going year by year thing right now. <laughs> if I've learned anything, you really don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> John Pizel is burned in his factory with all of his files. I have to ride one of the falling brand's boards. Who should I choose? Mayhem, Channel Islands, DHD, JS, or Hayden Shapes? I'd probably go with DHD. Mick looks like he surfed really good on his boards. And he seems like he's pretty good friends with Pizel, and I'd be pretty sad if Pizel burned in his factory, so I <laughs> just got one of his good friends. <laughs> the US government rescinds my citizenship, but I'm allowed to immigrate anywhere in the world. Where do I move? I would probably move to Australia. Pretty cool, you can like road trip around, like have a really sick camper van thing, and just go surf. I mean, every part of that continent seems like it has waves. Like road trip's like this weird dream that we don't have here. <laughs> Who's most likely to win the Vans Triple Crown? Seth. I think he's a really good surfer, kind of at all those waves. He's really good at errors, he's really good at turns, and he's really good at pipe. Who's going to win the world title? Well, uh, Italo is really, really good out there. He's, um, sends it. <laughs> uh, Nathan, I remember Nathan was telling me last year, he's like, he came in from a session, he's like, Hello, went on these waves that like, we weren't even looking at. They were just these like, it was like a picking up stroll and just these crazy inside like warping double ups. So he'll just, he'll go. And he's got a lot of energy. So I feel like that's really good for Pipe because getting a lot of waves out there, I think is a good strategy. So, and he's in the lead, he's got that confidence and he's, just won Portugal, like he's got a lot going for him right now. I think Gabe has a really good chance, just because we all seen what he can do in this back half of the year. But mentally, after what happened in Portugal, I feel like at that time of the year, something like that, like I think it would fuck with anyone. Yeah, making a mistake like that, like that was a, that was a big mistake. But Gabe's super mentally strong, things like that. So that was a funny thing. When I asked Gabriel Mendina what he does to make himself stoked, and I guess I'll just tell you guys this in the world. Maybe I should or shouldn't, but I am. So I was like, oh yeah, what do you do? You know, like now that you're the world champion, best in the world, you know, what gets you stoked to surf? How do you get stoked? And I don't even like, I just like to compete. Different answer than I thought was coming. <laughs> but it's like, he's going there to win. So yeah. the day he's done winning is gonna be like the day he's not surfing anymore. 
I feel like it's super good for people who have a competitive nature and I feel like it drives them to be the best and I'm super behind that. But just for me personally, I don't have that competitive nature. And so like, say when I had a wild card into the pipe masters and I sat there and it wasn't because I was scared to go out, but I just didn't want to serve pipeline in a contest. And so I let somebody else go out in my heat and everybody was like, oh, how could you give up a wild card of the pipe masters four guys out and so out of respect for the wave and the people and the place and and myself like i'd rather just follow my heart and so it's funny because jamie sterling got in the contest and he made it to some like the quarterfinals and got 13th and ended up to becoming like that was his first contest he did really good and he started getting paid and so it was rad because he really really truly needed it and so i don't know there's just give and takes you know and so it's just not my thing i think it's super cool for people who uh, that brings that out of them. But I'd rather just go because I love it or it's my passion. And now let's talk surfboards. After hearing out John Pizel's sound argument for going short and thick with equipment, Harry Bryant headed straight to the Vans house, ignored all John's advice and paddled straight out to rock pile lefts on a 7-4 Paul Gravel. We caught up with Harry this morning at the house at Log Cabins right as Nathan was pulling up and got the story behind the swallowtail. I actually had a trip with Nathan, pretty rural part of Australia, and just got talking to this guy in a pub and he wanted to sell this board. He needed petrol money to get back to his house. <laughs> and, uh... I was like, well, show me it. Walk me over to his car and he pulled this board out. And I said, how much do you want for it? I'll pay for it right now. And he said 200 bucks. Gave him 200 bucks. We met Paul Gravel, yeah. And he was super cool. And he was in a town in the middle of nowhere. He's been shaping for ages, but this board looks like it may have even been over here before once or twice, I reckon. It seems pretty old. It's in good condition, but it's super heavy. Hopefully it's just one of those boards that you'll have forever. The polish is sick. It's different. It has a polished gloss coat and some trippy thick stringer. So it, I feel like it's made to surf on like a solid wave. Like from back here to here has a different rail. It's more of a down rail than what you see normally. Or like this guy, he shaped maybe a little bit later. And so this was like the most high performance model say at that time. I feel like it looks like the boards that you see, the, the really, really top of the pecking order, 50 year old guys yeah. at places when you travel the heavy waves. Yeah, and this is also when people had like a five board quiver. You surfed Sunset, Haliva, kind of on the same board, you know, it wasn't like you had 30 boards or this different now. Need this thing back here by 8 a.m. Don't talk to strangers. Don't pull over on the side of the road. Don't take your eye off this thing. Let's start with the lions and kittens. <laughs> Tiff. <laughs> Let's start with John John's kittens and lions. The lions are a really good thing and the kittens a bad thing. Kitten for me would be not being able to surf yet and it's winter time and there's good waves and the timing of the surf right now like that last swap pipe and and the lion would be it's actually both my brothers ivan's been surfing so good it's been so fun to watch like seeing my brothers really click into this whole new like world like he's got a way better style than me and nathan This year, Jack Robinson is the surfer that I and I think most people want to see on tour more than anybody else. And I hope that he wins both events because I want to see him at G-Land in 2020. Jack Robinson, that's my lion. My kid in this episode is lice because there is apparently an outbreak on the North Shore and I just got back to the Volcom House this afternoon and Yago Dora had showed up and was being de-loused by his dad. I went to the, and immediately shaved my beard because I was terrified. It's almost gone. I have three or four in my head still. <laughs> and is it true that they don't send kids home at school if they get lice? They just fine comb them. <laughs> just let it mix with the dandruff, you're all right. <laughs> my lion is uh, this Hawaiian surfer, Moana Jones. She got a crazy barrel last Monday at Pipe. And my kittens are all those kind commentators on Stab and YouTube. Uh, they can go fuck off. 
Who's a commentator? Guys, they don't show up. They just write <laughs> oh. behind a oh, fucking oh, computer. Uh, what are the blogger guys that comment yeah. things? Yeah. Oh, like. Those guys are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, how about you? Al is a lion. Al Chapman is definitely a lion on the North Shore for just, um, I want to say, for many years of riding big waves, being at Sunset in Waimea, and just being, you know, an original badass. Not many people make their own boards and ride their own boards and have had to do it since that's the only way you got a board. I love seeing Al. I love to hear his stories, and I love to hear what he has to say. Nathan, what's your kitten? My kitten is something I don't like. It's bad. Negative. Okay, it's bad, it's negative. I try and keep that out of my life, but you have to have it because there's not positive without negative. <laughs> so I'm gonna just say traffic, being stuck in a car behind another car with a car behind me. Fucking going really slow. And before we go, here's some granular details on the Triple Crown from Stab's Mikey Ceramarella. Michael Ceramarella here, reporting the truth about the WSL's QS system, live from a secret bunker in Costa Rica. Fuck, just edit that out, okay guys? Heading into the Vans Triple Crown, we have four Brazilians who will inevitably qualify for the CT, only to fall off again next year and then re-qualify through the QS. The WSL doesn't want us saying this, but we've done the math. Literally any surfer in the Vans Triple Crown can theoretically qualify for the CT by winning Haleiwa and getting second place at sunset, just like Dusty Payne did in 2014. So whether you're Baron Mamiya in 12th place or Coconut Willie in 302nd, you've got a shot. Don't let the WSL pull the outer known wool beanie over your eyes. Speaking of beanies, my condolences to Ashton Goggins' beard. Now, back to you guys in the booth. Thanks for that, you fucking nerd. It looks like hell even might get underway tomorrow. It's the end of this second episode of Vans and Stab the Pickup. Stay tuned for the next one to see what kind of crispy, crusty news the North Shore will save us. <laughs> see you guys on Monday. Sign us off, Dave. Sign off. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Okay. We forgot. Ah! That's my sign off. <laughs>